when loading your equipment on your trailer or maybe you went and picked up a pallet of material, where do you load it at? Do you load it to the front? Do you load it in the middle? Or do you load it to the back? Do you know where to load it properly so as not to cause any trouble? If you load it too far forward, maybe you get some fish tailing. If you load it too far to the rear, maybe you get some fish tailing. A few weeks ago, my wife and I were headed to South Texas. We were out in the middle of nowhere. We came over a hill and got him behind a farmer with maybe an 18, 20 foot bumper pull utility trailer. And he had a big pallet of sack creek. Looked like 90 pound bags, 80 pound bags on there, not sure but it was heavy and the first thing i noticed it was loaded to the rear of his trailer and i told my wife i was like man that is crazy the way he's got it loaded probably went to the big box store probably had short forks on the forklift probably as far forward as they could push it and he thought to himself probably as i've done in the past ah oh, it'll make it it's close enough i'm not going very far i tell my wife maybe we need to get a camera and film this but before i could even get those words completely out of my mouth he begins to fishtail. He begins to fishtail violently. So I backed off a little bit so he would have plenty of room uh, to either crash or to get it shut down. And fortunately for him and all the rest of us, he did get it shut down, pulled over to the shoulder, gathered his thoughts, probably cleaned his britches out a little bit. He could have wiped out, could have been very serious, could have been injured or killed. But luckily he was able to get that thing shut down. And his choice at that point was either to hand unload all the material to the front of the trailer uh, to get it displaced properly or just to limp on to the to the where he was going with that to get it offloaded so let's cover and get it see if we can get an answer on where to properly load our cargo and how to displace the weight properly so that we can pull safely and we don't have any crazy scenarios as we move our tractor forward you'll begin to see the back of the truck and the trailer squat so we're putting more load on the trunk we're on the truck we're increasing the tongue weight and as we back up and get closer to the axles we'll see some of that relief and then if we move too far to the rear we'll see it come up quite a bit and we're removing too much tongue weight from the truck so let's see if we can find a happy spot Most of your pickup trucks on the rear axle, so on the bed, it's gonna be taller on the back end than it is gonna be at the front. So the truck is not gonna be level unless you put a leveling kit or something like that on the truck. If you've done that, this is gonna be different for you. It's gonna be a little harder to get your weight uh, correctly on your truck and trailer. One thing I did do on this was I pre-measured the clearance from the bottom of the fender well to the ground before I loaded the truck and the trailer, and I had about 41 inches. Now that you can see we're loaded, I have a little over 39 inches. So we've squatted almost two inches. But if you back up and look at the truck, the truck is pretty level. The other thing I like to do on the trailer preloading before I put anything on it, I like to run no more than an inch high on the front. So what that means is the front of the trailer is approximately an inch higher than the rear gives you a little bit of preload. And that's what we've done here. So where I've got the tractor loaded here, we can take a tape measure or we'll ride it 20 inches on the front end and 20 inches on the rear end. So our trailer is pretty level and we have some tongue weight on the truck. We have the truck pretty level. It's not squatted. It's not the same height as it was when we began. And what, what makes that important, it's a misconception. A lot of people will load a heavy load right above the axles. The problem is when you put that load right above the axles, you're not putting enough tongue weight. You need 10 to 15% of whatever your weight is, whether that's a piece of equipment whether that's pallet material, whatever it is, you need 15% in front of the axles or 15% towards the tongue of the trailer to get some proper tongue weight on the truck. If you have too little tongue weight on the truck or if you have too much, it can cause the trailer to fishtail like the gentleman we seen a few weeks ago cause you'd have an accident. I've personally had this experience myself. It can get sketchy and can get sketchy in a hurry. You may be running 40, 50 miles an hour and have no problem then bump it up to 60 and lose control of your vehicle. So there's multiple ways to do that. Another way is you can look at your equalizer. If you have spring suspension, down here you have your equalizer, your gap in between the front of the equalizer and the gap in between the rear of the equalizer, it is pretty level right now. I started out with about a one inch gap higher in the front than the rear, but now that we got a load, it's pretty level. 
Another way you can check is if your tires are properly inflated before you load the trailer is your squat. Just take a look, just do a visual. And once you do this several times, you will be able to tell, hey, I've got my trailer loaded correctly. We're gonna show you a scale here shortly to actually show the tongue numbers on there. But this is something we see every day. Um, the thing I'm seeing here lately is people are buying these larger skid steers that are right at the limit of this trailer. This trailer is 14,000 pound GVWR. That's 14,000 pounds, including the weight of the trailer and the weight of the cargo. Well, if you put a 10,000 pound skid steer on here, you're right at the limit. I mean, you've about maxed this trailer out because this trailer weighs right at 4,000 pounds. So if you put that 10,000, yes, on paper, it's on the money, but here is the problem. 10,000 pounds is weight distributed. So imagine how the footprint of a skid steer, or maybe it's a mini X, you have a very small footprint. You've concentrated that load right in the center of this trailer. You're not dispersing that load anywhere else. You've concentrated it there. Two things that can happen. A lot of people will try to load it right above the axle so there's not enough tongue weight. The other thing that will happen being right here, all of the force of that weight is bearing down on maybe four or five beams of this trailer. You can actually fold the trailer up as a taco. We've repaired two this week from overloading that we had to remove the floor, cut half of the cross members out, straighten the frame up, reinforce it and add more support underneath it because they're gonna to continue to overload it. So it's very critical to know just because the pounds work on paper doesn't mean it's gonna work on your trailer. So don't, don't push it. Um, if you say, well, if my trailer won't haul the skid steer, well, you may have to bump up the trailer or you may have to get a smaller skid steer, one or the other, or a, a pallet of material. Like the gentleman had the other day, the large pallet of sackcrete that was right on the rear, that's a heavy concentrated load right on the rear of this trailer. And when we see the scale here in a minute, you'll see what I'm talking about. We'll mock up a pallet of material. Uh, so let's get on to that. With our cargo off, let's check the empty tongue weight of this trailer before we put anything on it so we can compare that to the numbers when we do load it. So let's let that down and we'll zoom in. All right, that is the empty tongue weight of the trailer. It's setting just on this scale. So we can compare that number to the number when we load the equipment back on here shortly. This is our tongue weight with our trailer loaded. As you can see the scale here, you can see how much tongue weight we've applied with the unit on here. This is exactly how it's set up on the truck. I have it mocked up with a forklift for safety, but the only thing holding it up is this scale. There's no weight on the jack and there's no weight on the forklift just to show how much tongue weight we have now that we have our trailer loaded compared to when we had the trailer unloaded. So now we're gonna simulate, maybe you're going to the big box store to get you a pallet of sackcrete, maybe you have some fencing to do, and you have a traditional utility trailer that has side rails and you cannot load from the side, they have to load from the rear. And this is what I see, a lot of these places have short forks on their lift, they'll put it as far forward as they can, maybe try to push it a little bit, and then they send you on your way and good luck to you. So that's what we're gonna simulate right now. I'm just gonna push this about as far forward as you could with a four foot set of forks and let's check the tongue weight. This is a very common load scenario that I see in this position or maybe a little bit far forward and sometimes they can even scoot it up to almost center the axles and you go on your way and you think that's good enough. So let's go check out the tongue, light, tongue weight we have our number beforehand, and now we're gonna see what our number is after. All right, let's watch the scale as we apply the tongue weight. That is it, we're completely setting on the scale, so let's check that number compared to what our preload number was. So our empty trailer tongue weight was 650 pounds. We have loaded our crate on the rear, which is around 2,000 pounds. Now we're down to 450, so we have lost 200 pounds in tongue weight that's not gonna be safe to haul that. We're gonna scoot it up a little closer to the center of the axle, see what that rating is, and then after that, we'll move it up to the front. So I have pushed the crate as close to the center axle as I can, even with our long forks. So now let's take the weight off of the jack, put it on the scale, and see if we've gained or lost any tongue weight. Did the scale move? Let's take a closer look. So I scooted that crate maybe three feet forward and we gained almost 100 pounds of tongue weight. We're almost back to empty tongue weight. So we're still not where we need to be. So let's move this pallet around and see if we can get to where we need to be. So 
So now with the crate pretty much in front of the axles, let's relieve the uh, jack on here and let's see what we have on the scale. That is completely off. Let's check that number and let's do the math. So as you can see here, now that we've moved our load closer to the front of the trailer, we're about 925 to 950 on our weight. Our starting empty tongue weight was 650. This pallet weighs between 2,000 and 2,200 pounds is approximately what it's got on it. And you wanna add 10 to 15% of that load to the tongue. So if we do the math on that, how much is that? That's about right where we need to be. So just imagine, if you look here, if you go to your big box store and you get a pallet of sackcrete and your trailer has rails, they are not going to be able to push that that far forward. So what are you going to do about it? Well, you have a couple of options. You can either not haul it, get a different trailer, or you're going to have to get them to help you hand load some of the material to the front. I know you don't want to hear that, but I'm going to tell you right now, hand loading it to the front in the parking lot and hand unloading it when you get to where you're at is better than hand loading off the side of the highway and uh, maybe you get hurt, maybe you get killed. Um, it is a dangerous situation. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of know-how. You're not gonna have the scale with you, but they can tell you how much a, a pallet of sackcrete weighs. If they can't, get your iPhone out, get your smartphone out, do the math. It'll tell you how many pounds per bag. You can figure about 10% what you need to do. And again, you can look at your tires. You can look at how it squats your pickup. If you put 2,000 pounds of weight on your trailer and your pickup does not move down any, then you do not have enough tongue weight. If you put 2,000 pounds on your truck and it squats, then you need to scoot that to the back. This is very important. I think this is something that gets overlooked at probably on a daily basis. We see trailers going around here with bent rear axles it's because they're putting all the weight on the front. We see them with the too far forward, crack the tongue out. You're having to use that rear axle of the truck along with these, but most of the weight that you're gonna put on a trailer is gonna be between here and in this area most of the time. It's not gonna be centered right over the axles. That's a misconception on a utility trailer. Do not think you can center it right over there. Now, if you're hauling a Mini X, it's even more critical because your footprint is so tiny, you may have to load the machine backwards, spin it around. Same thing with your skid steer. If you can't, maybe you have an attachment on the front or maybe you're hauling attachments, you may have to back the skid steer on it. I know people say, well, I don't like backing them on. I get it, but you got to back the thing off. At the end of the day, you have to get your load right to stay safe, to keep you safe, keep your family safe, and keep the rest of the motor in public safe. So I hope that this was informative. I hope maybe you've learned something. I'm not gonna leave the link to this scale in this video. Reason being, it works good, but you have to have some safety measures in place. We have a forklift with a 15,000 lift capacity underneath it in case that thing were to tip over. If you want to figure out your scale weight on there, they do make some hitches that have a scale built in that tells you tongue weight. I'll leave some links in the description below. I don't use that, but, but we're hauling every day and we have this available. But do not go out on the internet and buy you one of these little scales right here and try to figure this out on your own. You may get hurt on that. If you're worried about it, if you want to simplify it, get you one of the hitches with a built-in scale. Remember, leave us a comment below if you have a different idea for video. We've just we've seen a lot of this lately, and just like I said, when we were headed to South Texas, we've seen that, and I was like, man, that'd be a good idea for video, because, I mean, I'll tell you how long that guy's been hauling a trader, but he, he may have ended it that day. So with that being said, we're going to get out of here. We're going to get this stuff unloaded, and we'll see you the next time.